Right, we're going to talk about replacing the alternator pulley today. Um, and this is my Ford, of course, the Duratec HE 2 liter petrol. Um, but you will find that this um, procedure applies to most alternators. But we're talking specifically about one with a um, overrunning alternator pulley. This is the uh, sort of semi unidirectional um, clutch system. So OAPs or uh, overrunning alternator pulleys are found on a lot of modern cars alternators. Uh, rather than a simple solid pulley, they include a one-way clutch uh, that allows the alternator to keep spinning at high revs when it's spun up, but the engine RPM suddenly drop, you know, like with a uh, harsh upshift. Um, they make things a bit easier on the rest of the belt accessories. Uh, they're supposed to improve fuel efficiency because the alternator is never dragging on the belt, so to say. Um, and you can see the difference they can make to a system just in terms of random movement uh, in this uh, demo from Ina. So they're a, a nicety of modern engineering, but as with all complications, they are another thing to go wrong. So they do, and uh, they tend to need replacing after a while, like unlike a, a solid pulley would. When they do go wrong, they tend to seize up and the, uh, the overrunning feature will be lost but they apparently make nasty noises in the process. And this weird knocking sound that you can hear uh, in this shot is my bad one. Uh, at the time of filming, I had already replaced a lot of the other pulleys in this system. So I had sort of already eliminated a lot of other noise and I uh, knew that the alternator was one of the last possibilities just by uh, process of elimination. You can quickly check to see if it's seized up by just trying to turn the alternator through its body, uh, turn it the opposite to its direction of rotation, uh, by just pushing on the fan blades. Now the idea is, is that you should be able to turn it one way but not the other. Uh, the direction in which it does move would be the overrunning clutch letting it slip. Uh, don't lever too much on the fan blades because you could bend them, they're not very strong. Uh, if the pulley is working as it should, it will move easily. Now, if it behaves like a solid pulley, like this one is, and you can't turn it either way, then that's bad news and the OAP needs replacing. You can also take the belt off, uh, just work the tensioner and uh, get the belt off the alternator so it's free to turn. And then you can have a play with it uh, like any other pulley, check for lateral play, slip or lash, and uh, any scratchiness or noise as you uh, spin it. But mostly these OAPs will seize up and uh, that's how you know they're bad. So to replace one, you will need the specialist tools, which fortunately now are available at uh, reasonable prices online. To check which, it's best just to look. Uh, you can see here in the mirror what I'm dealing with, a uh, small hex. It turns out to be eight millimeters down in the bottom there on the end of the shaft. And then toward the top, there is that female splined nut, uh, which takes the uh, specific tool. You can count the splines like this, uh, just on the photo, for example. There are usually 33, I believe, like there are here, but sometimes 31. And uh, yeah, then order the correct tool. Which leads me to my next point, which is access in the car. Now, as you can see here, there's not much room. In fact, none at all. And uh, here's the tool. It's basically the uh, correct size spline insert with a 17 millimeter hex. And yeah, there's no way that I can even get that inserted here, much less uh, work it. And even if I could get that one in and get a tool on it, it's still no good because I would need the second tool to hold the shaft using the small hex. And uh, yeah, it turns out that hand tools uh, wouldn't suit me in this case anyway, but more on that later. So the long and short of this is that the alternator may well need to come out of the car. In fact, I'd go so far as to say it probably will. And it certainly did in my case. So I have a separate video on removing the alternator from this Ford Duratec, which is in a Mondeo. So go check that out if you're interested in that process. Otherwise, from now on, I'll be showing it removed. Now with it out of the car, it's a bit easier to examine the seized pulley for one thing. Uh, if I stick something in the fan blades here, I'm uh, trying to turn the pulley both ways, but it is quite solid and it won't move in either direction. And I'll show you later uh, how the new one behaves instead. 
Now the way these tools work is the special spline tool inserts in the upper section of the pulley and it is hollow, meaning that you can get a bit through it to uh, hold the shaft. So in my case, like I said, I needed an eight millimeter hex bit and a, a normal length one won't be long enough. So you do need this sort of uh, long version of the extension to it. Um, a lot of them are Torx, uh, not hex, uh, which did worry me initially because an eight millimeter hex is not very big and it's not something that would usually take much torque. And I was concerned about rounding out the shaft hex, uh, but the shaft must be made out of some pretty hard steel because I did not have any issues with that. Uh, either way, you, you'll need something that you can attach to a bar, something like an Allen key will not do. Uh, so typically you'll get a, a square drive attachment bit like this. So yeah, the, the tool slides around this concentrically and then both can be inserted into the pulley simultaneously and you work the hex on the tool with a spanner of uh, some arrangement. So my original plan was to use this uh, combination you see here with a pipe spanner, which I thought would be strong enough and an extension tube for leverage. Now it all goes together like this and then it's just a case of holding it while you make sure that the tools are properly engaged in the fittings and then you should be able to lever it off. Now, in short, this wasn't going to work for me, but um, I did try a few things. The reality is these pulleys are put on pretty tight and uh, being steel on steel, they can end up you know, rusting onto the shaft. Firstly, uh, it might help to soak it in some penetrating oil. I actually left this one, one uh, overnight before trying again. Uh, then you need to work out an orientation that's sensible. Uh, if you have the pulley horizontal like this, it uh, makes more sense because the tools won't fall out of the pulley once properly inserted. And you do want to make sure that you have complete engagement in order to risk uh, avoid and the risk of um, rounding anything out. And uh, you, you can apply equal and opposite torque to uh, both tools at once like this. And the other thing I should mention is to check the thread direction of your pulley. It's not marked on them, and at least not mine. Uh, it should be such that the belt direction would be to tighten the pulley, uh, but if you're not sure, then uh, get the new pulley and examine its thread uh, before you go trying to tighten it when you want to undo it, because some of them are left-hand uh, drive threads. So here I'm holding the nut with my foot and I'm pulling on the tool that's turning the shaft. So you see I'm trying to undo the nut in the correct counterclockwise direction, but yeah, it's not coming loose. And despite my concerns about the 8mm hex bit being unfounded, I have nevertheless managed to ruin one tool, which is the, spi the pipe spanner here, which I thought I could get away with. I thought it would be strong enough, but it's, uh, it's opened up at the end and the 17mm hex is uh, now more like an 18mm. Tool abuse, I know, I know. Uh, don't worry, they're cheap. And the, um, the hex on the spline tool is also a little damaged where it's turned inside the spanner, but it's not too bad. Right, the more serious way to get some torque onto this would be to use a vise. Now I've seen other people use a bench vise to hold the spline tool, the, the, the hex part of the spline tool directly, as in they just, they just clamp it down and they just start cranking on the shaft. Now I was loath to do that because I could see the hex walking and slipping out. I'm not sure that the jaws and the average uh, bench vise is really up to that task, uh, given the amount of force that I knew was going to be necessary. So let me introduce you to uh, what I should have used to begin with, which is a good quality ring spanner. Now I didn't use one before but with my pipe because it wouldn't fit inside the pipe, but where it will fit is in the jaws of a vise. So you can arrange the whole thing like this and hold the handle of the spanner in the vise. You need to have the alternator tilted just so in uh, such a way that everything is square, but it's certainly feasible as you can see. And then you can put the shaft bit in and try cranking on that, again in the opposite direction while holding everything square. But as you can see, it's still not letting go for me. Now at this point, uh, these are my DIY options exhausted, really. And it's time to talk about why that special spline tool is black. Okay, so after ruining a few hand tools, I decided that wasn't going to work. And I gave up and I uh, did it the easy way, which is to say I took it into a shop and I had them use an impact wrench on it. Now, of course, if you have an impact wrench, you would uh, go straight to that because that is the right tool for the job. 
Uh, unfortunately, I didn't, and they're rather expensive to buy, especially if you're not going to use them very often. Um, anyway, the shop uh, took the whole unit out the back, and I don't have any video of this because uh, they were so quick. They were um, out the back for about 30 seconds, and he came back out, said it came straight off, no problem. And uh, to look at it, the threads don't appear to be damaged. Um, so there's not even any really any signs of rust. So yeah, definitely that's the case of using the uh, the right tool for the job, and it only cost me a ten dollar donation to their uh, their social club. So yeah, that's the way to do it. Now what we need to do is get the new one on, and I uh, do think that I will be able to use hand tools for that because uh, that should be a job for the torque wrench. Here is the uh, the new pulley from Ina, or its box. Uh, see in the bottom left they illustrate that the, the drive direction and the slip direction so you can check that. Now inside is the plastic cap that was missing from my old one, um, possibly one reason it seized up actually. And the pulley itself, nice and shiny. And uh, then there's a useful instruction guide which doesn't help you with removing the old one, but it does tell you uh, not to use an impact wrench to install the new one. Uh, and it illustrates the hand tool setup along with specifying the uh, 85 newton meter tightening torque. And uh, just while I've got the two pulleys separate, check this out. See how I can hold this new pulley with my finger inserted in the center, and I can try to turn it clockwise, but it won't move. That's the drive direction. But when I turn it counterclockwise, it will slip. Now it's not exactly free spinning. It's uh, not like a uh, bike wheel hub, but it's free enough that my finger can hold it. Whereas if I try that with the old one, like I showed you before, it's completely seized and it will not slip in the counterclockwise direction like it should. So if you have a suitable torque wrench, you would set the torque to 85 newton meters, attach the shaft drive bit, and then if the pulley has a typical right-hand drive thread like mine, you will need to reverse the ratchet direction because the torque is being applied to the shaft, not the pulley. Uh, however, this is a trap because many cheap torque wrenches like the one I have here do not provide a torque function when their ratchet is reversed to the left-hand direction. So you either need a better wrench or you will have to do it by feel. Or alternatively, you could use like a crow's foot attachment if you have one. Um, but that would be a bit awkward. I think you might have trouble getting it to fit. So here is the new pulley on. That was a little bit of an adventure, a little bit of a lesson in using the right tools for the job, specifically the impact wrench to get the old pulley off. Uh, I've ended up damaging some tools, nothing too expensive, so um, no real harm done. And in terms of getting it on, uh, you would need a torque wrench, if it's say one of these click style torque wrenches, uh, you need one that can um, be reversed in, in such a way that it can measure torque in the clockwise, uh, counterclockwise. Uh, normally undoing direction uh, and some of them many of them cannot uh, however I wouldn't worry too much about it because if you have experience in um, tightening lug nuts on wheels for example it's about the same amount of torque so you can just eyeball that you can just judge that um, it's uh, it's not going to come undone in use because when it's on the car when it's being spun any undoing torque so to say if I try to turn this counterclockwise it just slips because that's the overrun direction and that's precisely what it's designed to do. So there's no real way that it can come undone on the car. Uh, you just need to make sure that it's you know wound all the way down and done up tight against the end of the threads. Okay, so that's it. The plastic cap can go back on the pulley and it's ready to go back in the car. Before it does, I said before I'd show you what this looks like with a good pulley. So here, if I stop the fan again with my screwdriver, I cannot turn the pulley in the drive direction, that's clockwise. But if I go the other way and try to turn it counterclockwise, you can see it slips easily. So if you're checking this on the car and it's like this, then you'd have to say it looks okay. Okay, so that is about it for this video. If you're interested in seeing the alternator go back in the car, then uh, check out the separate video I did on that. Once in, with the engine started up, you can reproduce whatever scenario would give you noise or movement before and uh, check that it's fixed. You can hear this engine sounds a lot less sick now. That knocking that was just around idle on light throttle has gone completely. 
Um, the belt is also rock solid and steady. There was a slight bit of flutter and movement visible in it previously, although nothing like that Ina demo. Anyway, uh, that's now um, gone. So hopefully that's the end of my accessory belt woes. We'll see. And I trust that was helpful. Do have fun.